As the coronavirus continues to spread, more and more people are lending a helping hand. A Southern California man who enjoys 3D printing is doing his part by making plastic face masks and donating them to those on the front lines of COVID-19. CBSN's Jasmine Veal learned more about how he got the idea. Tell me, how, how did you start this? What is your background? Yeah, good question. So obviously this is not my day job. This is more or has been more of a hobby for me. Um, I've been 3D printing for the last couple of years, primarily just making toys and tinkering uh, for the kids, some remote control airplane stuff and whatnot. And uh, on Friday, I was just on Facebook and uh, I saw a friend of mine who's a nurse over at Cedar sinai Hospital. She had posted a message saying that uh, the hospital was in need of this personal protection equipment. And, you know, there was everything on that list from N95 masks to... Uh, these protective shields to gowns um, and whatnot. And I had a look at these shields and I thought, well, you know, these could definitely be printed on something like a consumer grade 3D printer. And so I had a look online to see if there was anyone doing this. And sure enough, there were a few groups uh, around the world who were coordinating their efforts in putting together a design that was efficiently printed on one of these consumer printers. Um, and so I thought, well, let's give it a shot. So I printed a test in my garage. Uh, the test came out flawless uh, in, in sort of my first try there. And I posted it online saying, you know, hey, uh, I know that you're looking for these shields. I can make them for you on my 3D printer. And right there and then the response was uh, just unbelievable. And so I thought, well, with one printer, I could probably do 30, 40 a day at the most. Uh, and based on the response, it was obvious that there was a much greater need, you know, not only for that hospital in particular, but for hospitals across the country. And so I thought, well, how do I speed up production? Well, the only way for me to do that is to acquire more printers uh, and more filament or the ink that actually goes into the printer. And so I started a donations page. And within just a couple of hours, we had raised thousands of dollars and uh, it's only been live now for less than a week. I think we've raised over $13,000. Uh, the more money we raise, the more we can start printing and producing. Uh, we'll have 20 printers up and running in my garage as of Friday this week. Right now we have six. We're expecting five more to be delivered today and then nine throughout the rest of the week. So uh, I, I'm crossing my fingers that we'll have all of this up and running come uh, Saturday at the latest. And then come Sunday, we should be able to produce anywhere from 250 to 300 pieces a day. Oh my gosh, and just that you're, you're taking your free time to still do this and, and, and do something to such good use. Uh, we, we are act actually hearing that USC, the architecture program, has also started doing this. Have you heard of other people and along similar lines? Yeah, I mean, there's a whole sort of grassroots movement in 3D printing enthusiasts starting to come up with new ideas and new concepts to uh, uh, to help fight this um, uh, the crisis that we're in right now. So we're starting with face shields. Uh, there's a company that I've seen up in Seattle that's working on an N95 uh, mask where the filter part is just a simple cutout from a HEPA filter of a vacuum and the mask itself is actually 3D printed. So they're trying to get that approved. Um, uh, and if they do, then we'll move on to those as well, because there's probably a, a, a much bigger need to, to get N95 masks out to these um, uh, medical professionals. Uh, the other thing that's worth mentioning as well is, you know, we've heard a lot of stories about countries that are running out of respirators. Um, there are designs that are appearing online now uh, using stepper motors where you can 3D print, you know, 95% of the parts. You've got a little motor that's essentially working to push a lever up and down on a device that pumps air into a patient. Uh, I'm watching that uh, really closely as well because if that gets uh, some momentum behind it, we'll definitely start to run some test prints there. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is, you know, as we build relationships with these hospitals, we're finding out more and more about what they need uh, and, and you know everything from hand sanitizer to uh, alcohol wipe down pads to obviously these shields and masks. Um, it, it, 
uh, we're putting together a list to try and figure out what those top five items are. And if, for instance, you know, let's say hand sanitizer is at the top of the list, we're thinking about reaching out to all the uh, gin and alcohol distilleries here in the U.S. to get our hands on the ethanol, which can produce uh, uh, this disinfectant. So, um, you know, we'll continue down the path with these face shields. And as we see what else is needed, uh, we're going to raise our hands to try and uh, get those items out there. Jeremy, when I see dads like you, businessmen and, and people like you doing this, something that the government just can't do right now, it is just, it, it just blows me away. And, and we are so grateful because I think you've really, you've carved out this, I think, new career for yourself in business, <laughs> maybe even after this. So, Yeah, thank you. Thank you. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that my business will come back as soon as this crisis is behind us. And um, uh, and we'll we'll do well from uh, from there on. But for the time being, my wife and I, our entire family is fully invested in. Hope people donate to help you in the cause and our our first responders, those on the front line.